Hello, everybody. We're continuing in section 6.2, and we're going to go talk about functions. This is this is a concept, one-to-one one -one and onto. Uh, these are concepts you probably have seen in uh, regular like, high school algebra classes, uh, but let's just go through it. <clears throat> so uh, a function, now we're talking about linear transformations now, but this is really true of any function. Uh, a function is called one-to-one, -one when the pre-image of every W in the range consists of a single vector. And another way of saying this is that if T of U is equal to T of V, that means that U must equal V. So here, this picture here is an example of a one-to-one -one function because each, um, each, uh, you know, uh, each, L you see, uh, we're going here. Uh, so we're going, so, one element goes to one, one goes to one, was a, that's a one-to-one -one function. The second one down here is an example of something which is not a one-to-one -one function, because, <coughs> excuse me, because you see, <coughs> excuse me, that um, this guy here and that guy there both go to the same, to the same place. Now, the second one is still a function, it's just not a one-to-one -one function. So uh, now in algebra, they might've taught you that a, um, a function must pass a vertical line test, and that's true of a one-to-one -one function. It also has to pass a vertical line test. In addition to that, in addition to passing the vertical line test, a one-to-one -one function also would pass what they call a horizontal line test. So if it fails a horizontal, if it fails a horizontal line test, it's not a one-to-one -one function. But it, if it fails a vertical line test, it's not a, it's not a function at all. So functions always have to pass the vertical. One to one functions are special and they and they even pass a horizontal. And again, here's an example of a function. This, this function is one to one, it's not one to one. And that's because this uh, guy down there has two different uh, pre images. Now, here's a nice theorem, and it's, it's not hard to prove. In fact, we're going to prove it in just a minute. Theorem 6.6 .6, that if a, a a linear transformation T from V to W, uh, it, then T is one to one if and only if the kernel of T equals zero. Well, obviously, if T is one to one, then the kernel of T has to equal, can only equal zero because one to one means that there can only be one, one, there can only be one thing that maps to one. And uh, I'm sorry, there can only be one thing that maps to zero. And of course, that would be the zero vector maps to zero. That that's always happens. So that could be the only thing. So that's very simple. That's just that we take care of in the first line, right? If T of V equals zero, uh, can only have because T is one to one. T of V equals zero can only have one solution, and that would have to be V equals zero, and that's it done. But the 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 other but so that's that's very straightforward. That practically follows the definition of uh, of one to one function. The uh, other direction to show that if the kernel of T equals zero, then it's one to one. That take well, that's also pretty easy as you as you're gonna see, but it's gonna take a little bit more. So that's that's what we call a converse. So conversely, suppose that kernel of T equals zero. That's really what we want to prove. And let's just say we have two uh, we have two um, two two uh, uh, U and V are vectors in the domain, and T such that T of U equals T of V. So we want to show that now because T is a linear transformation, T of U minus T of V is equal to T of U minus V. That's that goes with being linear. But we know that T of U minus T of V has to equal zero because if if U if T U and T V are equal to each other, then I said I mean just look at this equation right here. If I just bring T V over to the other side. I get T of U minus T of V equals zero. But that means that T of U minus V equals zero. But wait a second. We said that the kernel of T is just one, consists of just one vector, which means that U minus V has to equal zero because that's the only vector that's in the kernel. So if U minus V equals zero, that means U equals V. And that means that T is a one-to-one -one function because we see it, it, when T of U equals T of V, that implies that u equals v, one to one pal. Hope I explained that not too horribly. Now here's some examples of one to one and not one to one linear transformations. 
the uh, here we go the um the linear transformation the, given by the transpose so this is going from m this is a transformation from m mn so the capital m stands for matrices and then the small m and n are the, are the size of the matrix so we're going from the m by n matrices to the n by m matrices um and the function the particular function is the uh, transpose so t of a is equal to a transpose by the way the t here that T right there and that T right there are not the same thing because the T, this T over here is, is, is the transformation. That T up there stands for transpose. That, that, happens, to be, that happens to be the particular, which it just so happens that we use the same letter uh, for that. So general, anyway, uh, this is definitely one to one because the kernel, as we had said, the kernel consists only of the zero matrix. We, we, we mentioned this. Since the kernel consists only of the zero matrix, then the function must be a one-to-one -one function. Now, on the other hand, the the, the uh, transformation from R three to R three, the zero transformation, meaning that everything goes to zero, well, that is not well because the kernel is all of R three. Since the kernel is more than just a zero vector, that means this must not be a one-to-one -one function, which is actually pretty obvious, you know. Uh, but that's the uh, files. I just want to use the uh, the theorem that we just proved. So theorem six point six is pretty cool and awesome. And let's um, let's go on to the next thing. Now we have a couple other functions, a couple other theorems. Uh, the first one we're not going to prove. The second one we are going to prove. Um, if <clears throat> here's a linear transformation from V to W, okay, and W is a finite dimensional vector space. So T is onto, if and only if the rank of T is equal to the dimension of W. Now, just to refresh your memory, the rank of T, that means the dimension of the range of T. Now, the range of T lies within W. So we're saying that if the range of, oh, I, I'm sorry, whoopsie, I didn't tell you what, what onto even means. My bad, let's, uh, let's just uh, pause up for a second here. Let me just highlight something. Uh, pause recording. Okay, a uh, sorry about that. Uh, a function is a function is um, onto when every element in W has a pre-image in V. In other words, uh, W, the entire vector space W, the entire codomain is equal to the range of T. So, when the range of a function is equal to the entire codomain. We say that function is onto, and this again, this is a concept you probably learned in like I don't know, it's intermediate algebra or college algebra or something like that. Uh, and this, this, these ideas, by the way, of a one-one onto functions, we're talking about them in the arena of linear transformations. But these these concepts of one-one -one onto, that's that's um, that's, these are concepts of any function. Uh, we see this, you know, all over the place. So um, anyway, uh, so so. A function is onto if and only if the rank of T is equal to the dimension of W. Now, again, the rank of T means the dimension of the, of the range. So basically saying that if the range has the same dimension as the codomain, then, then the function is an onto function, uh, and which, is, which is to say that every vector in the codomain W gets a hit, so to speak, by this by this um, by this function, or every fu or every vector in, in W has some pre-image in V. Anyway, uh, that's our theorem six point seven. Very cool, awesome theorem. Um, and the uh, next theorem six point eight. We're talking about functions which are one to one and onto. Okay, that's very cool. So T is one to one if and only if T is onto. Now, but, but, but there's more to this. Uh, T is a linear transformation from, from vector space V to vector space W. And V and W are both of the, sa of dim of the same dimension. They're both uh, n dim dimension. That's very, cru that's crucial to this theorem. Um, so if uh, then T is one to one, if and only if it's onto. So, so in this scenario, one-to-one -one and onto uh, are, are equivalent. So 
let's uh, prove it. So T is one to one, right? Now, if T is one to one, then that means the kernel of T is equal to the zero vector. Now, now the dimension of the kernel of T is zero. Uh, now, that being the case, we had learned back in theorem 6.5, the dimension of the range is equal to N minus the dimension of the kernel. That's what we had learned. But we, but, but uh, dimension, <clears throat> but that's just equal to N because the kernel is a zero dimensional, which is equal to the dimension of W. So we see the dimension of the range is equal to the dimension of the entire codomain. So if, which is what, which is, which that's what onto, which we also know um, from theorem 6.7, that means that T is onto. So that's pretty cool. Now, similarly, on the, the other, the flip side, when something is, when, by the way, when, as a rule, when something is if and only if, that means we need to prove it in both directions. Now, let's assume that T is onto. Well, if T is onto, then the dimension of the range is equal to the dimension of the codomain W, and that's equal to N. Now, 6.5 would, if we apply 6.5, that would imply that, uh, well, if this is equal to N and that's equal to N, the only way that's going to, and this is N minus the dimension of the kernel, well, that means the dimension of the kernel has to be zero. So if the dimension of the kernel is zero, then we apply, then 6.6 .6 kicks in, and that means that T is one-to-one. -one. So basically, it's very cool. We, we proved 6.5 in a previous video, and, and, that, and then we did 6.6, 6.7, 6, and we use all these to prove 6.8, 6.8. So it's very, very cool and awesome. Now, uh, let's let's get some uh, concepts here, some examples and concepts. So we want to look at a linear transformation, uh, T, from Rn to Rm. It's M like November and M like Mike. And this is represented by T of X is equal to AX, where A is a, 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 a matrix. So we want to find the nullity and the rank of T uh, again, the nullity is the dimension of the kernel and the rank is the dimension of the range. And we want to determine whether T is one-to-one, -one, onto, or neither. So it might be, might be one, might be, it might be one-to-one, -one, but not onto, it might be onto, but not one-to-one. -one. It might be both onto, -one. it might be both, it might be neither, all, all possibilities. So now T, so if A is one, two, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. So what's the story? Well, Basically, the dimension of the domain this is because it's a three by three matrix. That means what, that means the, the transformation is going from R three to R three, and the dimension of the domain is three. The dimension of the range is also three. Why is it also three? And the dimension of the kernel is zero. In other words, this is so. This is a, this is on one to one, and it's on to. How do we? How do we see that? Uh, because since the the matrix here is in is, is in uh, row echelon form, so the rank, uh, as we as we explained already, is, is we can just see it, we can just see that the rank is is um, is three. Now, for for example B, so these are all in reduced. These are all easy because they made this easy because these are all in row echelon form, and. Basically, the rank really just counts from how many col how many columns of leading zeros and leading ones. So there's one, two. There are two columns of leading one, so the rank is two. In this guy here, there's this column and that column contain leading ones, the first two columns. So the, so there are two columns of leading one, so the rank again is is two uh, here. And here also there are two columns of leading one, so the rank is two. Well, the dimension that we just get. The, the 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 dimension just comes from how many columns you have, so B has two columns, uh, C has three columns, and D has three columns. That's where this uh, comes from. Now I just do a little subtraction. Three minus three is zero. Uh, two minus two is zero. Three minus two is one. And here three minus two is one. So is it now? If if uh, in so in this scenario, it's going to be one to one and on two. Example B is going to be one to one, but not onto. Uh, example C is going to be one to one and onto. And example D is going to not be one to one and it's not going to be uh, onto. So this is an example of neither. 
So we have uh, we have all the scenarios here. We have both. We have uh, neither, and we have in the two in the middle where it's one but not the other one. So these all work out, and it's just and they all just come, you, you get these all just from the uh, the theorems that we showed six point eight and so forth. So um, let's uh, let's now talk about what happens when a function. Well, there's a uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blah, 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 blah. some of you may have noticed that if that R three a vector in R three looks like a matrix M three one. Let's just say uh, that's just a column matrix uh, with three uh, three by one column matrix. The truth is, even if you look at R four and M two two, they're kind of the same thing because um, you know they both have four components A B C D whatever you want to call them, and they're kind of the kind of the same thing. So when two when two uh, vector spaces are kind of the same thing. We call them isomorphic. Uh, iso meaning the same. And here's the definition. A linear transformation from V to W that is one to one and onto is called an isomorphism. So if it's a linear transformation and it's one to one and it's onto, then it's called an isomorphism. For, more, furthermore, if V and W are vector spaces such that there exists an isomorphism from V to W, then V and W are said to be isomorphic to each other. So basically what an isomorphism is, does here, besides the fact that it creates a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two um, vector spaces, it also, the isomorphism kind of, you know, it's, it's a linear transformation, so it preserves, you know, the linearity, it preserves some of the functions, you know, um, the function structure, if you will. Anyway, isomorph isomorphic, vector spaces are of the same finite dimension and vector spaces of the same finite dimension are isomorphic, which is what the next theorem says. So, and let's, uh, here we go. Oops. So two finite dimensional vector spaces, V and W are isomorphic, if and only if they're the same dimension. Two finite dimensional vector spaces are isomorphic if and only if they are the same dimension. This is really cool and awesome. And let's go through the proof. Assume V is isomorphic to W, where V has dimension N. By the definition of isomorphic spaces, you know there is just a linear transformation uh, T from V to W that is one to one and onto. Now, because T is one to one, it, 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 that means that the, the dimension of the kernel has to equal zero. That's something we learned already. Uh, which means that the dimension of the range equals the dimension of the domain, which is which is n. Now, now further, because t is onto, so that means the dimension of the range is equal to the dimension of w, which is n. Now let's let's prove this the other way around. Let's assume that v and w both have the same dimension, dimension n. So let b be a basis for v and b prime is a basis for w so b and b prime are two different worlds because this is in this these vector these v vectors here are b is a bunch of v vectors from the domain uh vector space and b prime is a bunch of w vectors from the codomain um vector space so uh, let's, let's scroll up a little bit so um we're over here so if you have an arbitrary vector in v you can write that as C1, V1, C2, V2, dot, 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 plus C and V, and something we've done many times. And you can define a linear transformation that from, from V to W, where T of V is C1, W1, C2, W2, dot, 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 plus C and W1. In other words, basically what we're doing is that we're keeping the same constants, the same scalars. That, that's, 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 how, that's what a linear transformation does. It keeps the same scalars, it just replaces the, the V with the corresponding W. So this linear transformation is both one-to-one -one and onto. So V and W are gonna be isomorphic. And that's pretty cool and awesome. So now I wanna give it some examples of famous uh, isomorphic, isomorphic vector space. So all the vector spaces in example 12, which I'm about to show you, isomorphic are R4. And here we go, uh, here we go. So example 12, so R4 
M41, M22, P3, that's all the polynomials of degree three or less. And, and V, this is a vector space from, this is a subspace of R5 where the fifth um, component is just zero. So, because so basically this vector space is really just x1, x2, x3, x4. It's all the different, you know, uh, ordered pair, uh, ordered quadruplets, quadru yeah, of, uh, x, of x1, x2, x3, x4. And that's really the same thing as R4, but it's a subspace of R5 because of the zeros. So that's kind of kind of cool. Um, all of these kind of behave the same way and they all kind of uh, have the same, uh, the same structure. And that's what it means to be isomorphic. Isomorphic. Isomorphic is when these two vector spaces kind of do, do the same thing. Like, like one, two, three, and ABC kind of do the same thing. Um, that's really what we're saying here. So that's pretty uh, cool and awesome. And that concludes section six point two, which is which we can celebrate. Yay! Okay, now I'm going to uh, stop the uh, recording, and we'll see you guys next time.